So, so what are the goals of arthroscopic treatment? Certainly uh, to preserve and restore the cartilage, to preserve the labrum and repair it if it's torn, and then eliminate this conflict. So to really try to recontour the bone so that the contour, so that the conflict doesn't exist anymore. So what we're gonna do is look at look arthroscopically in the hip. So we're gonna have the ball here. The socket's gonna be here, and the labrum's gonna be here. So what you're gonna see is, is as the hip rotates up, it's this bump and prominence of bone that's trying to fit into the hip. And as the hip comes down, you'll actually see where the articular cartilage lies. Um, so here's your bump as it's rotating out. Here's the articular cartilage. So it's all this that doesn't fit well and makes a conflict into the hip. So if we take and we pull the ball back out and we look directly into the socket, you're looking at the acetabular cartilage here, and then you're looking at the labrum here. So there's a separation between those two. And so this is early on. So there's a, there's a, there's a small tear here. And then you're starting to see a little bit of a flap develop in the cartilage. So it's not big, it's not torn away and hanging down, but there's certainly a separation and a start of a delamination here in the cartilage. So what we're going to do is start to recontour this bone. And so we take a burr inside the hip and slowly um, we just start to recontour. And right behind the articular margin of the head, we're going to remake a concavity there. And we're going to do it, uh, it, it's very slow, it's millimeters at a time. And so you, what you'll see is, we're kind of restoring this concavity uh, right behind the ball. And again, you're doing it slowly, millimeters, millimeters at a time. Now we can do the same thing on the socket side. And so here we're on the outer edge of the socket. So the socket's actually inward. This is the labrum that's been torn. Um, you can actually see, you, you pick the labrum up and you'll see the edge of the articular cartilage here. But you actually, in, in the area where there's, a, where there's Oftentimes it's in the front and it's just a small area where there's too much socket, you can recontour that area. And, and so what you're doing is just taking a small amount of bone away from the outer edge of the socket. So you're really decompressing the hip on both sides, on the ball side and on the socket side. And then we're gonna repair the labrum. Well, what's nice is when you take some of that bone away, you're, you're, you're getting a nice bleeding area to repair that labrum back into. And so uh, what you'll see and I'm just, I'll just restart this uh, again. So you're gonna, we're going to drill a hole for an anchor and place an anchor in just on the outer edge of the cup. This is the articular cartilage and in the inside of the cup here. And then we're going to pass that, that suture around the labrum and really fashion it back down to, to, the, to the, the bleeding area of bone that we've made and to the area that we've, we've contoured. And this is typically out in the front of the hip. And then when it's all done, and this is the benefit of doing arthroscopically versus open, is you're going you're gonna to test it all. So we've recontoured the, the ball, we've recontoured the socket, we've repaired the labrum, and now we're going to watch the hip move. And so you're going to flex the hip all the way up and in, and you're going to see there's now this concavity of bone. This is the articular side of the head. So the labrum's resealed on the head. But now as we try to, as we try to force the hip in again, is, is what was different from the first slide is now you're going to see there's a nice concave area where the, where the hip's allowed to move in and there's no conflict remaining between the edge where we took some socket off and, and right behind the ball where we, where we took that, uh, where we recontoured that bone. And what's nice in this scenario is you can take whatever athlete you have, if it's a, if it's a hockey player, you can, you can actually take them out and you can skate them and watch with a camera and see if in their normal skating motion, this is where they impinge. If they're a runner, you can take them through the running motion. If they're a soccer player, you can extend them and take them through a kick. So that's the nice thing about doing it arthroscopic is you really can see where the impingement take place and really if you've addressed it. And so if you, if you see an area that, that still has a little bit of promise of bone, you can go back and take that away and then retest it again. And so this is typically what you'll see on the x-ray. You know, here's, the, here's that where we've kind of had the concavity on the back. We've kind of lost some of that in the front. And then afterwards on the x-ray, we're going to see where we've kind of restored that concavity. And again, you'll see that on the socket where, we, where you kind of normally will see a, a crossover before surgery and afterwards. We're going to have taken a little bit of the edge away in the front and that crossover is going to go away. And so it, there, are, there have been few studies, but studies done on, on hip arthroscopy and how they do well. And they actually, they do pretty well. They, uh, they, in the, the scores that we look at in the hip, they get significantly better. 
We know that they're better if we repair the labrum versus as just to breed it. But the one thing that's important is this is not a, this is not a procedure for arthritis. So once, once you have less than two millimeters of joint space or you've narrowed and gotten arthritic, those patients don't do well with the hip scope. So there are a few other uh, conditions that are amenable to treatment, certainly the impingement, the chondral uh, and labral injuries. Sometimes that when the hip is significantly loose, you can tighten it up just like you tighten up a shoulder uh, in the capsule. Tears uh, within the hip between the ball and sagamate, the ligamentum teres, you can treat that uh, arthroscopically. Uh, the snapping hip syndrome, and certainly if there are loose bodies there. And this is kind of my favorite slide because this is always this is always a procedure that was started out as an open procedure. And I, I don't think these are equivalent procedures. Um, if you look at having your hip dislocated and opened versus having these two little uh, portal sites made, um, certainly there's lower morbidity in this. And when you talk about return to play, typically with an open dislocation, although it's, it's just as effective as an arthroscopic procedure, um, but this is typically 10 months on return to sport, whereas the arthroscopic surgery is, is three to four months in return to sport. So, so I think the take home in all this is it's certainly a, a, a procedure that's good for the young athletic population. By young, I don't mean, I don't mean chronologically young, but physio physiologically young. And it, it's good at relie alleviating symptoms, getting you back to work, and certainly with low morbidity. Thank you.